<coughs> Hello everyone, this is Oseron 369, or the artist formerly known as the Great Roberto. Okay, this video, I haven't made one in a while, this video could very well be one of the most powerful videos I've ever made. It's not about weed, it's not about tripping, it's not about sex, <laughs> but it's about, it's about the monad, the true monad. Now, I haven't decided on the title for this video yet, but I'm going to probably make it something semi-inflammatory, like, you know, proof of God through mathematics or something like that. Something that's going to get people um, to bite, because, you know, once you mention the G word, the God word, people fucking flip out. All right. So first we've got to establish when I say monad, monad, if you don't know what that means, monad means everything and nothing. All that is, everything and nothing. Okay? And that is a description of God. You know, I'm not talking about the Creator, gods in the Bible, the Elohim, or anything like that, or aliens, or whatever you want to think. I'm talking about all, everything and nothing simultaneously. And that is the number nine. I'm going to show you exactly what is going on with that. I'm going to draw it out the best I can with the resources I have right now to work with. I, I, I have a dry erase board, but the markers are all fucking shit. They don't work. So, I, But I don't think I need it. I think I can get the message across with just the papers I have. Okay, nine is the monad. Let's get started. Okay, what you see here in my hand is a stack of paper. Okay, I'm going to try to show you what's going on here in a good way. Okay, what you see here is four geometric shapes on, you know, what would be uh, my left. You see a bunch of numbers. Well, those are the multiplication tables all the way going through nine. Okay, and there each of those tables are reduced to its lowest common uh, lowest number form, which in each, each case produces a series of 1 through 9 in a random order, and then it stops. The only exceptions to that are 3, 6, and 9. Okay, can you see that? Let me get in and you can get a screenshot. Okay. I'll hold it here for a minute so you can look at it. And so you can see what's going on. I'll try to get up on the numbers and shit. Okay? I'll come back to this. Okay, now, what we have here is the multiplication tables. Now, I want to add something. This isn't something I made up. This is based on uh, Vortex Mathematics. You can look that up. Okay? And I think this is also Vedic Mathematics. But there's something in here that I found, and this is something that you have to work on yourself. And this happened by accident because I've been aware of vortex mathematics for a long time now, you know, over a year, and it's amazing. But it wasn't until yesterday, not yesterday, Saturday, I was watching a video of a little kid going through one aspect of this, okay? And he was using the fours tables, and it shows how the sequence repeats. So when you, you know, any of these uh, multiples. You know, you can, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, on and on it goes. It, each one of those tables repeats the 1 through 9 number sequence without repeating in it to infinity. So it keeps repeating. So the example of the 2, 4, two, four 6, 8, 10, 12, and on and on reduces to 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And then it repeats again, two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, nine, and on and on it goes, and they all do this. Okay, and um, so this kid was doing this. This kid was doing this, and it just got me to start playing with it. And I started playing with it, and it just kept on revealing more and more and more. The first shape that the kid was doing on the video produced this geometrical shape, this one here, right? as a result of four and another one, five. See, each of these shapes 
Each of these four shapes is one of the multiplication tables going, and it's producing that geometric shape one way going through a right construction um, I'll show you in drawing out but it was going through a right construction draw and the other one goes to the left and it produces the same thing and both of those construction sequences cancel each other out and become nine so let me show you something again sorry for the up and down okay you see those geometric shapes the top one is produced through the one and the eight tables and that add those together it comes to nine the bottom one here is produced through the two table and the seven table this one up here is produced through three three in the six nine doesn't move nine is the stillness in the bottom one here is produced with the four and the five tables all of those add up to nine which means it can't, nine is the cancellation, nine is the stillness. Okay, if you look in the work of Walter Russell, which I, I highly recommend and I have before, his basic model is light is still, light doesn't move. Okay, my dog is knocking at the door, he's such a fucking asshole. He's not coming in, so I'm done. But light doesn't move, the only thing that moves is the reflection of light. That's where the speed of light comes from but the light itself doesn't move, and this is showing you that. It's showing you that nine doesn't move. The only thing that moves is duality and matter. And now let me get to it. Um, so I showed you the geometric shapes. Each one that produces itself through a left and right oscillation that leaves you nine, but nine doesn't move. So nine is the monad. So now, so what is the monad? The monad is a, the monad is everything and nothing simultaneously. You can't say it's everything and nothing because that's ten. One and zero is, is everything. One represents everything, all matter, okay, all material, all of the material world is represented by one. Nothing is represented by zero, okay, that is the separation of nine, one and zero everything and nothing and what that does is produces two distinct states everything and nothing so there's the two okay then now you have duality this is what all the religions talk about du duality overcome overcoming duality to get back to the one the universal one which is the still non-moving light of nine and this is what this shows so now duality you have duality you have the two so now you keep adding to that. You go two, four, six, eight, okay? And you can't go beyond eight without repeating again. So it goes two, four, six, eight, and back to ten, one and zero again. So eight is the highest expression of materialism. And you see this, you know, in the octave scale of music. You see it in um, the Yi Jing, which is 64. Uh, the 64, um, 64 hexagrams which is based on yin and yang, positive and negative. Okay, but the highest expression of the Yi Jing is 64. Now if you add up all that is 64, all of the material world, what do you get? 10, 1 and 0 again. So this is the physical world. So it's telling you that the 8, the 8 represents infinity, but the 8 is infinity in the material only, infinite materialism. Okay. And it's telling you that nine is beyond materialism. Nine is everything and nothing simultaneously. Um, now, there's one other part to this. I, I know I'm skipping over some stuff, but there's another part of this that I discovered yesterday that might even be more powerful than any of this other stuff that I've mentioned so far. Okay, and that is... Now, if this represents everything... It has to apply to everything. It can't. You can't leave anything out. You know. So I was saying, how does this correlate to the Fibonacci sequence? Now, if you don't know what the Fibonacci sequence is, the Fibonacci sequence is a um, expression, a code found in nature. Our bodies have it. It's everywhere. Plants grow like this. It's just ubiquitous. 
Fibonacci sequence, but if you don't know what that is, the code of the Fibonacci sequence starts out with zero. And then it goes zero plus one equals one. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Eight plus five is thirteen. Thirteen plus eight is twenty-one. And on it goes, on and on it goes. Okay. Now I took this out 39 spaces, the Fibonacci sequence, 39 spaces, and that comes to 39,088,169. Okay, that's 39 spaces out. And then what it produced, is I have it right here in front of me, it produced what was seemingly an incoherent bunch of numbers. I was like, ah, shit. I mean, this doesn't, I can't see any pattern here, any real pattern. It doesn't, it's... You know, there's nothing that's jumping out at me. So, but then what I did was I applied it to the circular grid of the 1 through 9. And I should draw that for you right now. I will in a second, but I want to illustrate this point. I applied it to that matrix of the 1 through 9 circle. And what it came out with through the Fibonacci sequence was a distinct, repeatable, numerical pattern that repeats at least to 39 spaces, and there's nothing to suggest it doesn't keep going. I mean, if you want to test it beyond 39 spaces, be my guest. But that number sequence, I'll show you on the thing, is this. It's this, power, this is powerful. If you ponder exactly what's going on, this is fucking amazing. This number sequence up top here, can you see that? Is zero... One one two three four one four three two one one zero, and that keeps repeating. Right there, zero one one two three four one four three two one one zero. Okay, and that's produced on the wheel by finding the number of spaces. Once you reduce the Fibonacci sequence to this lowest number, to a single digit. The number of spaces moved from each number in the Fibonacci sequence produces that rhythmic code. Okay, in in doing so, using the shortest number number of spaces produces that lower code. Now, if you go the other way, if you go the long way, it produces the other half of that code. Okay, the canceling out. I need to try to get this up here for you. Which you get is 0887658567880. Okay, that's another distinctive wave pattern form. Okay. Now, like with the geometric structures, if you combine those two codes, they cancel each other out and, and form the stillness of nine. Non-moving stillness of nine. Okay. So nine doesn't move. Nine is light. Nine is God. Nine is everything and nothing simultaneously. Okay. So now, and then one more thing I figured out. Okay. That code from zero to just before the next zero is exactly 12 spaces long. Okay, 12, you know, 12 is a powerful number. We use 12 in our measurements. 12 is in the zodiac. Um, you know, 12 is, a, you know, if you watch an um, excellent video called The Matrix, I believe it is, by, uh, fucking what's his name? I'll think of it, hopefully real quick. But the code is called The Code. It's not The Matrix. It's called The, the Code by Floyd... Man, I can't think of his name, man. It's awesome. It's a great. It's a must-watch. But all the pyramids and ancient pyramid complexes and structures of the world use the code of 12. That's why we have the 12. That's why 12 is so powerful. But anyways, so that code is 12 spaces long. So now if you take that 12 spaces and count 12 spaces on the Fibonacci sequence itself, starting from 1, because you can't start from 0, because the zero was nothing, so there's no place to start, so you have to start from one. So on Fibonacci, it goes one, 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 two, three, five, eight, blah, 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 right? And the one and one produces is, is zero movement. The one and one is zero movement, but it doesn't, you know. So, but anyways, if you go 12 spaces on the Fibonacci sequence, that coincidentally enough lands on 144, okay? 
and 144 is 12 times 12, and 144 reduces to 9. This is amazing. I mean, there's so much more. I mean, this is something that when you draw it out yourself and look at it and ponder upon it, I mean, things just keep jumping out at you. Like, the different structures of the, of the multiplication tables and on and on. But this, all right, let me draw out one of these patterns for you so you can see it. Try to do this so it looks semi. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'll draw out the 4 and the 5 tables because that pr produces one of the most dynamic looking things. Okay, so I'll do the 4 first. So 4 is 4, 8, 3, 7. So we go 4... 4, 8, 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5, so 2, 6, 1, 5, and then back to 9, right? And then actually it goes back to four again because that's where it starts, right? So this is one cycle, then it repeats again going back to four. And this is the geometric pattern that you get from that. And that is going in a right hand oscillation, okay? Now the left, the uh, conversely, the five, I probably should have done a different one because four and five, because four and five are right next to each other, but it doesn't matter, it has to add up to nine. Because remember that nine cancel each other out. But so so now the five, the five tables is of course five ten uh, five ten fifteen twenty, but that reduces to five one six two. So five one six two. Five one six two seven three eight four seven. 3, 8, 4, and then 9, and then of course back to 5, like that, like that, and that produces a left and right oscillation of that geometric structure, okay, see how that makes sense, and that is where you get these numbers from, so this is telling you the code. This is, is this is telling you what the code is. So now, if you get each with a left and right constructing oscillation is four, two of those is eight, and that gives you the matrix of, of, of the material world. Remember, nine doesn't move. Nine is nothing and everything. The movement only movement all movement only happens in duality, positive and negative electricity. You know, Walter Russell's basic cosmogony is that this is an electric universe. All matter is nothing more than light. Positive and negative manifestation of light coming from the pure source of still light. If you look into Walter Russell, he mentions that all the time. Still light. The non-moving stillness of light. And all that we see is the reflection, light reflecting creating the illusion of movement. And this tells you that. This is telling you that. This is telling you that that the material world is motion, duality, motion. It's also telling you there's something more than that, and that is number nine. Because nine is everything and nothing simultaneously expressing itself in the divine nature of God. That's what God is. I hate to use the G word, but I'm using it now because, you know, God is a reference to omnipotence, everything, all that is. I mean, they keep telling you that God is everywhere. Now, please, please don't misunderstand me, you know, and think that I mean the exoteric expressions of Christianity, Islam, or Judaism as my interpretation of God. If you think that, turn this video off and hang yourself, because you don't, I mean, really. Because that's not, I mean, we are talking about divinity, we are talking about creation. This is telling you that the material world exists and the spiritual world exists.
together, they, they, inter, they interlace together. Alright, that should be it. I hope I didn't leave anything out. Oh, and also, you know, and again, this correlates to um, the uh, pentagram. The pentagram is a you know fairly holy symbol. You know, it represents the elements and the spirit, and that produces five. Okay, can we see that here? Five, and then what's five plus five? Ten, because you get these two creation oscillations. Yeah. But let me show you. Now this might be not absolute, but it, it, I the logic behind its construction is sound. Okay. This represents earth, this represents water, this represents fire, and this represents air. Okay, now, fire and air are masculine, earth and water are feminine, okay? And one more thing about, and they're separated. So on the tree of life, you have the, um, you know, the uh, right pillar and the left pillar, which is feminine and masculine. Okay, I haven't really I haven't really um, looked at this with the tree of life and Kabbalah yet, but I will. And also, it goes in order too, because these geometric shapes, these geometric shapes are just the number of space jumps to get to the next number. So the in, so the one table, the one table produces one jump, so it goes one one one. The two table, obviously, next goes two spaces to produce the shape. The three tables produces, goes three spaces to produce this triangle, this repeating triangle. And the four produce, is made by four jumps. And, and so once that goes four jumps, it's negative, it's reverse, is five spaces. So using this bottom example here, from one to two, or, I'm sorry, from the code, again, we're using the four tables. So 4 to 8 is 4 up there. Its lowest expression is 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. Its longest is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's, it, you know, it's the construction of the geometric shapes is telling you of the oscillations of the split of 9. It's re this is amazingly fascinating. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna stop this video now. I think I got everything I wanted to get. Um, I may have to update it again, but this gives you the gist of what I'm talking about. The monad is nine.